I'm Kathleen Henderson from Roots and Boots, and I'm going to show you how to grow microgreens right in your own kitchen. Microgreens are great any time of year, but I love to grow them in the winter when I don't have as much access to fresh greens from my garden. Microgreens are really nutritious, and there is a lot of variety. I have a bunch right here broccoli, peas, radishes, cabbage, so many microgreen options to choose from. The concept is really simple and pretty self explanatory. It involves soaking the seeds for about a day. You'll need some kind of tray or like microgreen setup. I'll show you the one that I use. So you're gonna rinse the seeds every day until they're ready to be eaten. So this is my setup. It's actually the only one that I've ever used. It's this system of stacking trays. It has three trays with drain holes around the edges and you just pour in your seeds. So the first step is to add your seeds to a tray. That's the rest of the seeds from this one package. I would normally add more, but I'm gonna go with this for now. And then for the first day, we want the seeds to soak. So this goes inside the tray to keep the water covering the seeds. So you just wanna make sure that the seeds are covered by the water. Next, I'm going to do broccoli greens. So when you're first starting out, you're gonna to wanna to experiment with the quantity of seeds. I've done it before to where I've made way more greens than we can consume. So maybe just start out on the small side and see if that's a good amount for your family, you can always increase it. All right, so again, you just wanna make sure the seeds are covered. And then I have one more tray that I'm going to do. For my third tray, I'm going to do beet microgreens. These seeds are a lot bigger. So sometimes my stacking tower feels a bit precarious. I actually just spilled some water. And to fix that, I like to use plates to keep everything a little more stable. And then this goes on the top. So now I've got my three trays of microgreen seeds and I'm going to leave these overnight until tomorrow, just soaking, just like this. And then I'll show you the next steps tomorrow. So my seeds have been soaking overnight and it's now the next day. I'm gonna show you how to rinse and kind of get them going for the next few days. So here are my soaking seeds and now I'm gonna drain the water out. And just rinse them a little bit. And again, drain all the water out. They're just going to sit wet, but no longer soaking in this tray. And I'm gonna repeat that process for all three of these seed trays. Just dump out all the water and then give it a little rinse. And that's it, you just stack them back up again and then I'll repeat the process tomorrow morning. The process is pretty self-explanatory. From here on out, you basically just want to keep your seeds wet and somewhat warm. Room temperature is ideal and you might even be able to see that these seeds are starting to sprout. So it's pretty quick depending on the seed type, but if possible, you want to rinse them every morning and every evening so I rinsed these yesterday morning, but I forgot to rinse them last night. And these, I think these are beet green seeds. They are drying out. The goal is to keep the seeds consistently wet without like 
sitting in puddles of water. So that's why you have the drainage holes. And this is just one setup for microgreens. Some people do it in mason jars with a special kind of lid for draining. You can look for whatever floats your boat. I'll also put a link to this particular setup in the description below for you. So you want to use cool water when you rinse your feeds. And you are literally just rinsing them and then letting the water drain. I like to give it a few shakes until I don't see many drops of water escaping anymore because again you want them to be wet but you don't want them to be sitting in standing water. We are a few days into our microgreens process here and I wanted to show you, not sure if you can see it very clearly, but some of my sprouts are developing what looks like fuzz and if you didn't know any better you might think that it was mold but it's not mold, it's actually tiny little hairs on the roots. So I just wanted to let you know in case you see that on your microgreens and are afraid that it's mold, it's probably not. It's hard to get the camera to focus on those little hairs, but I hope you can see what I mean. These are the broccoli greens, and we are now more than seven days out, I think about nine days. These are the ones that are ready to eat and the rest are not quite ready. Thank you for bearing with all the outfit changes in this video, but I did want to let you know about how long you can expect your microgreens to take before they're ready to eat. So a couple of variable factors. One is the temperature. In the winter, it takes longer. So when the temperature is cold, it takes longer for the little sprouts to grow and get to that ready to eat stage. In the summer, it's quicker. And also, generally, the larger the seed, like bean seeds, the quicker the cycle, the faster they're ready to eat. The smaller the seeds, the longer it takes before they are ready to eat. So anywhere from in the summer for a larger seed, like three days even, that it can take up to 10, 12 or 14 days, again, depending on the temperature and depending on the size of the seed. I love adding microgreens to a green salad. I've already got some broccoli greens on the salad, you can see, and I'm adding some red cabbage greens on top. I also wanted to show you lentil sprouts. These are one of my absolute favorites. The steps are the same. You pre-soak the seeds for six to eight hours or overnight and then go through the process of rinsing daily. And these are typically ready quicker than the smaller greens, than the smaller seeds. This is the way I like to stack my trays during the soaking step. After draining the water from the trays, you can flip over the base trays and nest the smaller trays in the top of those base trays. And then you can stack them up. And here is what the full stack looks like. I love adding bean sprouts to a salad. I love the consistency, the texture that they add. It's extra protein, added nutrition, and it really just helps to jazz up a green salad. Once your microgreens have reached that ready to eat stage, you can go ahead and transfer them to a storage container and store in the refrigerator. We like to place some kind of cloth to absorb moisture on the bottom of the container and then just place it in the refrigerator and use as needed. Shelf life in the fridge is probably only a few days, maybe a week if you're lucky, so do try to eat them up in a timely fashion. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please like if it was and subscribe to my Roots and Boots YouTube channel for more homesteading, homeschooling, home-based content here on YouTube.